Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris. I'm coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church, and this is PC Studios, and it is June the 2nd, 2022. How in the world are you doing? I hope you are blessed and highly favored by God. Hey everybody, um, anyway, today we're finishing up Thessalonica. I want to just do a shout out to everybody out there, hoping you're having a beautiful, beautiful day. And again, uh, I hope we have a great weekend this weekend. A lot of graduation parties going on. Uh, I know right now, Great Mills High School is graduating. So just uh, some exciting time for people right now. And uh, just praising God for summer coming up on us. I um, want to encourage you if you're out there today, this weekend, we're going to uh, sermon this series coming up. We're going to really get into chapter 1 of First Thessalonians going to be going through both those books. and So we're, we're talking today, though, about the world of Thessalonica. Part 1 was yesterday, part 2 today. We talked more about, just in general yesterday, the actual place and how it parallels much that's going on in our world. But today we're going to get delve into what made Thessalonica really unique. So when you see the first two letters of First and Second Thessalonians, and maybe you've read them, maybe you haven't, there's a lot of different theological views, especially about the return of the Lord, how we should live our daily lives, how the church should function. There's a lot of good bits of wisdom, how we should grieve dying people when people die, what, how we should relate to that, the rapture, you know, just, just different concepts, how we should not be lazy and we should work hard. Um, these concepts come from First and Second Thessalonians. They're really two good books of the Bible. But the background comes from Acts chapter 17. Again, Acts chapter 17, if you have your Bibles, you could be there. And we really learn about Paul's second missionary journey. Um, and he goes to Thessalonica for three weeks. He's only there for three Sabbaths. And where do we find that? We find that right there in, in, in verses 2. It says, as usual, Paul went to the synagogue on the three Sabbath days. He reasoned with them from the scriptures. So for three Sabbath days, Paul taught in the synagogue in Thessalonica. So then we start to hear he's, as missionaries, him, Timothy, Paul, and Silas. And how do we know it's Paul, Silas, and Timothy? From Because the first and second Thessalonians letters are coming from them, and we also hear about them actually being here in Acts chapter 17. So we know that they're on the missionary journey with Paul. It's amazing how the Bible weaves all these things together, and you can start to overlay the different letters and different, different churches that Paul talks about. We see manifest themselves in the epistles or the letters that he wrote to these churches. So the church of Thessalonians or first and second Thessalonians is the church of Thessalonica. So when we see here is there's people don't like Paul's presence in Thessal Thessalonica so they riot and they have mobs. I talked about that Sunday. I don't want to build on that. I want to build on this concept of Jason's household. They were so upset with the teaching of the gospel. And what was the teaching of the gospel? We see right there in verse 3. In verse 3, it says that he explained to them that the Messiah would suffer and then rise from the dead, and this Jesus I am proclaiming to you is Messiah. And that's in quotations. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. They didn't like that message. You know, to be honest today, people in our world, they don't like that message. They don't like us to proclaim that Jesus is Messiah. He's Lord. Because the moment we do that, we have to surrender our lives to him. We're acknowledging that he is God. We're acknowledging that he is Lord of all, King of kings, that there is no one other but him. And the household of Jason in Thessalonica did just that. There were other people. We know from this that it says in verse 4 that from Paul and Silas, their teachings, there's a large number of God-fearing Greeks, Gentiles, as well as Jews, and then also other leading women. Paul made sure that women were a part of the church. He made it clear that they received salvation. So for people that also say that the scripture is outdated or anti-women, they're making a point here to say many leading women in that society came to know Jesus. God-fearing uh, Greeks, Gentiles, those that, that weren't giving over to idol worship and the Greek and God, Grecian gods, they came to know Jesus. And Jews, even in the synagogue, came to know Jesus. How exciting to see God's movement with the gospel. But people did not like that. So they had riots, they had mobs, and they came after Jason's household because Jason brought them there, or Jason was hosting them there. At least it, it seems like probably Paul, Silas, and Timothy were staying with Jason, or Jason got affiliated, whoever this Jason guy was, right? Got affiliated with this, and it says 
uh, when they did not find them, they didn't find Paul, Timothy, or Silas, because they, they probably saw the riots coming and they got Paul to safety and Timothy and Silas. Um, it says when they didn't find him, they dragged Jason and his brothers before city officials shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has welcomed them. They are all acting contrary to Caesar's decree, saying that there is no other king but Jesus. Let's just stop there. This is where we're going to hang out today. So Paul, Silas, and Timothy were known for turning the world upside down. Why? Because of the message they proclaimed. We proclaim that this Jesus is Messiah. And so Jason, being a fellow citizen of Thessalonica, was brought before the city officials. They didn't like that he had brought them here. So they were the accusation against Jason in the court of law in Thessalonica was he's brought these men here that have turned the world upside down. And their message is contrary to Caesar. They're claiming there's another king, this King Jesus. Guilty as charged. Jesus is King of Kings. Because the message they proclaim is Jesus is Messiah. He's King of Kings. It's not that they're anti-Caesar. They weren't anti-Caesar. We're not anti-government. We believe in good government. We want good government. We want godly government. All right? So they end up imprisoning Jason and his brothers and his household. They attack it. And they end up having to pay, uh, you know, to get out of jail. They actually had to play a bond. It says in verse 9, after taking a security bond from Jason and the others, they released them. They weren't guilty. They couldn't hold them against treason against Caesar or anything of that nature, but they were guilty of declaring that Jesus was king. And so that's what happened here. They let these people, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, come in with this message of the gospel proclaiming that Jesus was Messiah. As a result of that, many God-fearing Greeks and Jews and leading women got saved. That, did, that created jealousy amongst the Jews. They didn't like this and, and, and created mobs and riots because people did not want the gospel to flourish or the church to be birthed in Thessalonica, but it did. And it all revolves around Jason's house. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. Are you a house of Jason? Are you a household of Jason? Are you the type of house that welcomes the gospel? Are you the type of house that wants to see the gospel flourish in our community? Are you willing to stand before city magistrates, even mobs and riots that might persecute you because of your faith? Will you be known as a person that turns the world upside down? Look, I don't know how we do that. You know, it's a God movement, right? Paul's preaching brought the gospel in such a powerful way. I want to see that in my ministry. I want to see that at Lexington Park Baptist Church. I want to see that in our community. I'm not jealous of other churches if they... I, I, I don't like churches that succeed that are a mile wide and an inch deep, and there's some in our area, some that are pretty big. Sadly, I don't think they connect the dots. I don't think that they're really preaching the full counsel of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They might touch on it, and it lacks. I, I hate to be critical of, of other churches. Um, some churches might be just short on that. Jason's house was not. Jason's house was fully about the gospel and preaching the gospel. Listen, I know there may be people that like to have tickle ears or, or to be easy believism. That's not what we teach. The gospel should change your life. The gospel should penetrate your heart. The gospel should make a difference in you. It change, should change us from immorality to morality, from ungodliness to godliness, from unrighteousness to righteousness. Not perfection. Not perfection. But being a person that has been saved, a person that has been transformed, a person that is being rearranged, that's born again, as the Bible would say, that we are a new creation. We have been regenerated. These are things that we need to understand that should be in our life if we're Christians. And so we are. We are Christians of, of that caliber, if you will. And we want to be Christians like Jason. If you look at Acts chapter 17 right there, Acts 17, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here too, to Jason's house. And Jason has welcomed them. May we welcome the gospel in our lives. May we welcome it in our homes. May we welcome it in our community in Lexington Park. Or I saw somebody from Cuyahoga Falls, Patty. May we welcome it in Cuyahoga Falls and all other cities and communities and capitals and states and even our nation. May we welcome 
this gospel that turns the world upside down. May we be unashamed of it. And may we see it make a difference. And may we be accused. Listen, just like Jason was accused of this, if we stood before a court of law, would be, you be accused of having the King of Kings? I pray that you would be. May we take that with us this week. May there be no other king but King Jesus. May we turn the world side upside down. May we be known for those things. And no matter what we face, whether it's riots or mobs or persecution or city magistrates or judges or courts of law or whatever it might be that comes our way, criticism, that we know that we are preaching the gospel and that we have the King of Kings and that we serve Him and Him alone. Jason's household faced all kinds of things. The city of Thessalonica faced all kinds of persecution. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, all kinds of persecution. But they kept preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to think we would be as bold as they are. But we live in the land of the free. And even though there are movements to go against us, at this point we still have a voice. May we never, ever take for granted that voice. And may we always proclaim it, whether it's in persecution or in freedom. May we never lose sight of what Jason's household did, and may we be a product of Jason's household and turn the world upside down. Hey, listen, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you have a great day. I hope uh, you remember these two realities, and those two realities are this, that God loves you, and so do I. We'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. God bless.